throughout his life, one thing that meant most to Jesus was people. He sacrificed everything to lead them to his Father and to love them no matter what. Jesus loved everyone. That was what made him so different and so necessary to our lives. I'm John Osteen, pastor of Lakewood Church in Houston, Texas. Through many years of ministry, we've discovered that there's no greater joy than loving and caring for God's people. That means you, no matter your denomination, race, or walk of life. Your dreams and desires are important to God, and that makes them important to us. We've dedicated our lives to bring in the compassion of Jesus to everyone. By building faith in God through the teaching and preaching of His Word, Lakewood helps those who have been overcome to be overcomers. We're interested in God's very best for you. So please, just as you are, join the people of Lakewood for the next hour as we open God's Word together. At Lakewood Church, we're here for you. We're so glad you've joined us today. We're all happy out here at Lakewood Church, and we're here to bring you the Word of God, and I know God is going to bless you today, and we're glad you're watching. Could I have an amen? Amen. I want to remind you about Abraham and Sarah. When God told them they were going to have a child, they were old. They were too old to have a child. But you know what Abraham said in uh, Romans? He said, they, the Bible says that he was fully persuaded that what God had promised, he was well able to perform. Yes. Now, you know, I'm fully persuaded that Jesus loves me. I'm fully persuaded that my husband loves me. I'm fully persuaded that you love me. And you do, don't you? Yes. yes. But you know what? You have to be fully persuaded if you want something from God. Fully persuaded that He can do what He has promised you. If you don't know what He can do, if you don't know He can help you get off crack cocaine, if you don't know He can help you to quit drinking, then you will not be fully persuaded. But if you read this Word and believe God, then you'll be fully persuaded and then He'll do whatever He asks Him to do if you do it, ask in the name of Jesus. And all the people say, Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Isn't that good? You know, I like the way Doby uses that hand. Praise the Lord. She's, she's a good exhorter and a good little preacher. And we're so glad you tuned in today because we're going to be talking about the Holy Spirit, not only today, but throughout all the rest of 1996. Make our confession. Everybody say it. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today I will be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same. I am about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever living seed of the Word of God. I will never be the same. Never, never, never. I'll never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. The television audience, we're reading from John's Gospel, chapter 16. These words of the Lord Jesus Christ. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient or advantageous, good for you, that I go away. Jesus is talking about going back to heaven. If I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Everybody say, me. Me. When he has come, he will reprove our convince or bring a demonstration to the world about three things of sin of righteousness and of judgment of sin because they believe not on me of righteousness because i go to the father and you see me no more of judgment because the prince of this world is judge you know if we can understand that we do not get the baptism in the holy ghost whenever we are first born again that we need an endowment of power, then we, we'll be on our way to getting that power. Jesus said concerning the Holy Ghost, the world cannot receive the Holy Ghost. Everybody say, the world cannot receive the Holy Ghost. Say it out loud. Jesus said that. 
All right, now that's what I want to get into your thinking. You can be born, you can receive the Lord Jesus Christ in the world and make him the Lord of your life and be born again, but then you are made, you're qualified to receive the Holy Ghost. So, so you, we need to get these steps. First, be born of the Spirit, and then Jesus said, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. John said, Jesus will baptize you in the Holy Ghost and and fire. So, so the Holy Ghost is for us down here on this earth before we go to heaven. If you have supernatural enemies, and you do, you need supernatural power. Say, I need supernatural power. And we're talking about the work of the Holy Ghost in this hour, in this day in which we live. And Jesus here is saying, if I depart, I'm going to send you the Holy Ghost, and he'll be in you, and he'll never leave you, he'll never forsake you, he'll, you're sealed until the day of redemption. And then said, when he gets in you, he's going to do three things for the world. Now, if we can find out what the Holy Ghost wants to do and begin to help uh, cooperate with him, we'll see him work more. You understand that thinking? If you know what he wants to do and you cooperate in that area, he'll work. If you're trying to do something the Holy Ghost is not in the world to do, he's not going to help you do it. He's not going to help you build walls between people and, and get peculiar doctrines and, and shut out everybody else. He's not going to do that. Could I have an amen? amen? No, he's not going to do that. But if you'll find out what he's on you and in you for and begin to do that, he said, I, I, when he has come, he'll con convince or bring a demonstration of the world about sin. What sin? Adultery? Fornication? Alternate lifestyles? What kind of sin? You have to see what the Holy Ghost wants to do. The sin because they believe not on me. The thing the Holy Ghost wants the world to know is the greatest sin they could ever commit is rejecting the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm telling you folks, that's what we need, that's why we need to be full of God, full of the full of the Holy Ghost. And you notice when you get the baptism of the Holy Ghost, all you talk about is Jesus. Do you know, you know, years ago, we used to have what we call Thursday visitation down here in the Baptist Church where I where I pastor. Everybody say, God bless the Baptist. I'll tell you one thing about the Baptists, they're organized. And they're out there, out there doing something. And every Thursday, we visited. We visited so much on Thursday. On Thursday, everybody got out of their houses and left because they knew we were coming. <laughs> and they, we, that's just how faithful we were. I never did like to go to Thursday visitation. And I was the pastor. That worried me. <laughs> but I thought if I ever get the baptism of the Holy Ghost, I'll be the best Thursday visitor that, I, that the world has ever seen. And you know, I got the baptism in the Holy Ghost in fire, and, 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 and the strangest thing, I didn't even want to go to Thursday visitation, sure enough, then. And I thought, Lord, what's wrong? I'm full of God, full of the Holy Ghost. I talk about Jesus everywhere I go. Why is it I don't want to get out here and do what I've been doing? He said, because all you do is knock on the door and say, uh, well, would you like to come to our church? Would you like to be a member of our church? Would you like to change your letter? We have a way for you to join our church. You're always talking about your church and what your church can do and about your denomination and all that. The Holy Ghost will not help you do that. You don't have to have Thursday visitation when you get the baptism of the Holy Ghost because he said... The Holy Ghost will come on you and you shall be witnesses. You don't, have to, you don't have to go out and witness. You are a witness wherever you are. I did want to get out and tell people about Jesus everywhere I went. I wasn't interested in going bragging on some denomination on a Thursday night or a Thursday morning. Do you understand what I'm talking about? The sin of the world is rejection of Jesus Christ. You say, well, what about adultery and fornication, alternate lifestyles, cussing and, and lying and stealing? All? Yeah, but if you get Jesus in your heart, you get born again, all that's taken care of. It's all washed away. And he said, I want you to get out, and I want you to start talking about Jesus. Don't, talk, don't go talk about Lakewood Church. Talk about Jesus. Everybody shout Jesus. Jesus. See, talk about, then he said, go out and tell the world about righteousness. The world hesitates to come to God because they don't fig can't figure out how they can live what they call a perfect life. And they think they have to live a perfect life. We need to go out and tell them that God is 
offer to them the gift of righteousness if they'll just accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. But then I preached on those two things on television. But here's the third thing. He said, of judgment. I used to think that that was a great white throne judgment over there in the book of Revelation. But that isn't what he's talking about at all. What's the Holy Ghost going to help us tell the world? Now you listen carefully. Of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. The Holy Ghost wants you to go and talk about the fact that the devil is a defeated and dethroned enemy. You know, Jesus said, the prince of this world cometh. He called the devil the prince of this world. And he has nothing in me. Amplified says, no power over me. We have nothing in common. There's nothing in me that belongs to him. That's a good way to live. Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, he calls the devil the God of this world, of this world system. And that's why the Bible says he that's a friend of the world is an enemy of God. I'm telling you, the, the devil is the God of this world system. And then Jesus said in John chapter 12, when he was facing the cross and going there to die, he said, now shall the prince of this world be cast out. I'll tell you, he did a lot of things on that cross. He took all of our sins. He took all of our iniquities. He took all of our skeletons in the closet. He took all of our past and our future and everything else that we would ever do wrong. And, and John said, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away, not covers, takes away the sin of the world. When he died on that cross, he died having nailed to that cross every sin of every human being that will ever live. And your sins were taken by the Lord Jesus Christ. Not only so, he died for our sicknesses. He tasted our death. He took our place. He was buried, rose again, went back to heaven with his own blood. But there's something else he did that people don't know, and I didn't know for 19 years. He, in his death, burial, and resurrection, dethroned the devil. Oh, hallelujah. You know, there are two forces in this world. The force of God, which is good, and the force of evil, which is the devil. I mean, you have to be out of your mind not to know there's an evil force. Young people are shooting with one another in cars, and, and, and people are on drugs, and alcohol, and alternate lifestyle, and strange things happening in the world. You have to look. But well, there's a force loose in the world. The most to destroy our families, destroy our children, and drag them down to hell. There's a force of evil. But thank God there's not just one force in the world, there's another force. There's another force. And that's God's force, the force of good and the power of God. Now what we need to know and preach to the world and demonstrate to the world is that Jesus defeated and dethroned that evil power which is of the devil. The Bible says he brought him to naught, he brought him to zero. Before Jesus came, the devil was 100%. When he came down to 90 and 80 and 70 and 60 and 50 and 40 and 30 and 20 and 10 and 9 and 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and he got him down to, everybody shout zero. zero. And that's why Jesus said in Mark 16, these signs shall follow them that believe. It didn't say apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, but those who believe. And do you know what the first sign he gave there? He wanted the believers to demonstrate to the world that Satan is defeated and you have the name of Jesus and you can break his power in anybody's life. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out demons. Demons have to bow to the name of Jesus. And we need to let this world know that the one they're following is already judged. His sentence has already been passed on him. I don't know how you feel about it, but I'm not going to follow somebody that's on his way to hell. I'm not going to follow somebody whose destiny, according to the book of Revelation, is to end up in the lake of fire. 
It's settled. He's a dethroned power, and his destiny is settled. And yet millions of you are following him, listening to him, offering, taking his suggestions, and living his, his lifestyle. No, the Bible says that the devil was cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the Lamb's book of life was cast into the lake of fire. We need to let them know that the devil has been dethroned and defeated. The Bible says in the book of Philippians chapter 2, if you have given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, he didn't say at the name of some denomination. Oh my, there have been days when the denominational names have shined so bright you can hardly open your eyes. But I thank God that the denominational names are getting dimmer and the name of Jesus is getting brighter. There's a band of Jesus people on the earth. And he said, you have given him a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow. Amen. Of things in heaven. That's a, not up there where God is. That's the heavens where the devil rules. In heaven, in earth, and under the earth. And that every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. We went to a little thing yesterday afternoon for one of our families here and they were telling us about someone that was sort of their enemy and treated them bad because they were a Christian but then finally you know they got in trouble and they came for prayer and you know it doesn't matter who criticizes you just keep on shouting and praising God because one day they're going to come and they're going to look you up and she said they, they found out this child was ready to die and, and asked ask them about it. They said, well, you, you, you know, they learned this in language here. Well, you don't have to, they, that child doesn't have to die. You going to let the devil kill that grandchild of yours? You going to let the devil take, did you know the devil came to steal, to kill, and to destroy? You're not going to, we don't have to let that child die. We can, we can break the power of the devil. That's, that's a Lakewood church member talking. And did you know they prayed, bound, bound the power of the devil, and you know that child lived, and that person got saved, hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a hand back. Amen. Amen. You know when Paul had that little woman followed him in Acts 16, and she was a soothsayer, a fortune teller, and she was crying out to them and crying at them. This she did many days. And one day Paul turned around, being thoroughly agitated, and spoke to the demon in her and said, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ, come out of her. And the Bible said in one translation, he came out that second. I mean that instant. The devil has to bow. And we as Christians have to demonstrate to the world by the use of the name of Jesus that the devil is a defeated foe. Amen. I remember years ago, I had a meeting down in the city auditorium down here in Houston. It's torn down now. But we, we had all large crowds down there in a meeting. And one, one night, they, it took about three or four men to hold this young man. He was demon-possessed. And he was screaming and kicking, and they were just barely able to hold him. And uh, I mean, these strong men could hardly get him up, up the stairs. And here they brought him right up over the platform where I am. I thought, what are they bringing up here for? <laughs> Go hide him in the back someplace. I didn't say that. But they brought him right over there. On this side, I'm standing right here. And I'm telling you the truth. While he was standing there, I tell you, the Holy Ghost came on me. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. I said, thank God for the Holy Ghost. I remember I said, turn him loose. And I said, devil, in the name of Jesus Christ, come out in Jesus' name. And that fellow fell flat on his face. I was new in this then. I thought I'd killed him. <laughs> and, and, and I'm telling you, he just lay there. And, uh, and directly he got up and he looked around. Didn't even know where he was. Just as sane and sensible as anybody could be. Thank God the devil is a defeated foe. Amen. We have to demonstrate that. I was holding a meeting years ago down in Florida for Gerald Erstein. And it was a sawdust uh, floor, a tent meeting. And, uh, 
And Lisa had bad asthma then. And uh, we uh, thought about not taking her to the tent meeting because it was damp and, and you know, it was bad uh, on asthma. But well, we said, no, we're going to take her right in there and, and, and God's going to take care of her. Do you know, during that trip, God healed Lisa. She's never had another bit of asthma from that time on. Give the Lord a hand clap for that. But, but here's what I started to say. I didn't know this, but there was a man, his wife was coming to this meeting. But he was mean, and he wouldn't come. He didn't like me. He didn't like what was going on. But uh, he had been in a car accident, I found out later, and uh, no, a gun, a, a bomb. He had uh, opened up some kind of a bomb that brought back from one of the wars, and it exploded in his ear, and uh, the, he had articles about it I read later, and his head was all swollen, and his ear was just, uh, you couldn't even touch the side of his face. It was just damaged, just ruined his ear, and that side of his face. I didn't know that. And uh, so, so, in all of his anger, she got him to come one night. And he was sitting on the second row, and the, these are movable chairs. You know, you can pick them up and take them. And he, just, he had an empty chair right in front of him, and he's sitting there. I didn't know he was there. But I was preaching about the power of the name of Jesus. And I, I, I tell you, it shocked me. I didn't, know, I didn't know all I'm telling you now. But here's what happened. While I'm preaching about Jesus, you know, the Bible says over there, and as they preached, demons came out screaming. I'm telling you all at once, at that fellow kicked the chair in front of him. It went about 10 or 15 feet in the air. And I'm telling you, he came out of there screaming toward me and then just fell right on his face, fell out. His mouth opened, looked like he had a mouth full of sawdust. I thought, I guess I killed him. <laughs> he, he didn't move. I didn't know what was wrong with him. He just kicked that chair uh, up in the air and just fell out. But I just kept on preaching because I didn't know what to do with him. I figured he fell out and him lay there. I didn't know the devil came out of him. I didn't know the devil got scared and ran off. I didn't know that he got healed. But in a few minutes, while I was preaching, he sits up. He looks around, glassy-eyed, feels his face, and begins to hit his ear. Of course, I didn't know all of what was wrong with him. And directly began to shout. And, 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 and all heaven broke loose. I'm telling you, he got up from there and got up there and told his story how God had healed him and the devil had left him and he gave his heart to Jesus. You know, I'm talking to lots of denominational people and you don't know the power of the name of Jesus. You don't know the power of the Holy Ghost. Listen, the Holy Ghost is needed in your life. You don't have to let your children uh, be lost to the devil. You can break the power of all those things in their lives. You don't have to let your home be broken up. I tell you, God's, the name of Jesus will take care of any situation the devil is, is trying to bring in your life. The devil comes to steal to kill and destroy, but I'm telling you, we're not going to let him do it. Amen. Say, I'm not going to let him do it. Amen. Say, in the name of Jesus, name of Jesus I, take my stand. I take my stand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand clap now. Amen. Now listen, you don't have to be in church to do this. Wherever you are, the Holy Ghost is in you. Wherever the need is, pray then. Somebody come up to you in your office and say, you know, I'm so depressed. I'm so downcast. Just say, well, I know the answer. Oh, you do? I got some new kind of medicine that'll take care of depression. Oh, you do? Oh, well, what kind of medicine is it? His name is Jesus. And just put a hands on it and begin to pray for them. Listen, this world We'll take notice when we Christians quit moaning and groaning and start casting out devils and taking authority over the name by the name of Jesus. And Jesus said, the Holy Ghost is in you to help you do that. You say, well, how do, how do I know I can do that? Well, the Holy Ghost will do it through you. He'll back you up. I said, he'll back you up. He'll back you up. And we need to go out and demonstrate to the world that the name of Jesus spells the doom of any demonic activity wherever it is found. And when the world sees that, they'll want to get out of the devil's camp and get over in God's camp.
They'll want to get out of the devil's kingdom and get into God's kingdom. Sentence has already been passed upon the devil you're serving and is trying to steal and kill and destroy your home. All you have to do is give your heart to Jesus and make Jesus the Lord of your life and get full of the Holy Ghost and go out and demonstrate. Demonstrate. You know, it's so important to get out of the devil's kingdom into God's kingdom. The Bible says, concerning God the Father, he has delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. And you can get out of the devil's kingdom today by giving Jesus your heart. I want you just to simply pray this prayer. Say, oh God, I turn my back on the way I've been living. I refuse to go to hell with the devil. God, today, let heaven make a record. I want Jesus to be the Lord of my life. Now, Jesus, here I am. I surrender my life to you. I open wide the door of my heart. Come into every part of me. From this moment on, I don't belong to myself. I don't belong to the devil. I belong to Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're my Lord, and I'll serve you all the days of my life.